mock draft Monday. We all went, did our, it's really, it's a four rounder, but now it's a three rounder with like three picks. Uh, unless yeah. one of the boys made a move, which is kind of weird. So you're going to see three picks, but technically it's the first four rounds. So yeah. it's the top 100. It's what we're thinking the Lions are going to do, what Brad Holmes is going to do. And for the first one, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go with Boone because me and Lucas have a more similar one, but we'll start with Boone's. So Boone. Talk to the Jeez, people. Here we, here we go, fellas. This is the Booner path. This is the real. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the real Booner path. And and listen, you guys cannot judge. You cannot judge. The draft every year, it plays out in ways that you never know. Like, guys drop, guys move up. I just happened to have Brian Thomas Jr. fall to me when I clicked on. I, I clicked start, and then all of a sudden, boom, Brian Thomas Jr. And I was like, oh, like, you can't. If he is available at 29, fellas. <laughs> yeah and brad holmes do you guys remember who was the wide receiver lucas last year man you we were sitting at fifth Avenue when we were doing the draft show and there was a wide receiver that just kept falling or, and we or were like, uh, jackson smith and jimba yes and we were like needs to be it needs to be it we didn't really need a wide receiver like that last year but this year if brian thomas makes it to 29 or even past 20 and you can oh. make a move to go get him you go yeah, and you get go. Brian Thomas Jr. <laughs> and you put him up there with Jamison Williams and Amon Ross St. Brown and Khalif Raymond and, and DPJ and Sam Laporta and that running back duel you have, and you have the best offense in the NFL for the next four years. And I will guarantee you that. So I, that's where I, as soon as I saw him fall, I went for him, Marshawn Nealon. I watched some of his film today. I, I kind of like him. I, I, and I know he's at mm -hmm. Western. He didn't put like insane numbers up. But, like, he's an absolute dog. And, I mean, staying yeah. in Michigan, like, that's a Detroit guy, Dan Campbell guy. It's kind of like a Hutch situation. Obviously not the same level, but just more so, like, staying in Detroit, playing for a team he probably grew up loving and knowing what it means to kind of be a Detroit line and do that so you know you're going to get everything out of him. Uh, Max Melton. And to be honest, I made this before all of the, the signing and everything. I still would do the same thing here, to be honest. I would yeah, go after Max Melton. Zeitler 34. Third. You imagine Cooper BB behind Zeitler just developing. Yeah. Dude, it, it, he and, and when Zeitler leaves, you have Cooper BB that hops in. This would be, and I said I said this last or a couple weeks ago in my last. I think this would be like if this happened, I would be I would give Brad Holmes a, an A plus 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 if this if this happened. Yeah, I'd be sipping Kool Aid, Booner. You could if <laughs> Brian Thomas fell to twenty nine. <laughs> And the Lions got him. You could cancel the draft. I don't need to watch the rest. Oh I just God. know that okay, we won. Lion, Lion just got another wide receiver one. And I mean, if you if you get Max Melton in the third, BB in the third, or no, you got both of those guys in the yeah, trade back in the third. Yeah, trade it up into the third. A again. Plus plus plus. Kool Aid's flowing. This would be an amazing draft. Oh my gosh, I want some Kool Aid right now. You boys are speaking facts. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, yeah. I, if he's at 29, yeah, yeah. Him and JMO on the field at the same time, yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you going to stop that? Amin Ra under him? What a How you, I've been telling you, best offense in the league for four years. Amin Ra and Sam Laporta would have a landing strip of open field because they <laughs> these guys would take away they would have to you have to put a safety on both those I mean for real I mean what these guys would get I mean I'm would probably catch 15 balls a game I mean I, I think at this because of the the type of player Brian Thomas is he is so explosive he's a red zone threat I love it and, and I think you know what I know people this is what I love about mock draft time Boone is when you put Brian Thomas there everyone's like he'll be gone we don't even know I think he'll go top 15 top 20 but if he's there, like who knows, Ooh. man? I mean, go, I've seen just go. He's we've going seen crazier LA. things happen. We've seen crazier things happen. Mock right here. He, he's going 15, and then you see a mock of him going in the 20s. So it's just like things are yeah. just moving around. It, it was literally like last year. Who would have bet Jameer Gibbs going at 12? No one. Guess what? Oh, yeah, 12. No a lot of guys drop down, and it's just the, the way the draft goes. That's why I do like doing the draft, the mock drafts, and whatever way it falls to me, I'm just like, all right, let's just play off of this. I don't care if someone wild falls. Let's play off of it if this happens. Because we do 100 mock drafts before the draft. So my, I, when I saw it, I was like, I might as well, I might as well do it. This is an, I, I'm going to grade my own here. Again, A plus here. If it, like if this happened, dude, I'm drinking so much Kool Aid when we're, we're when we're at our draft party this year. I'm going to have so much Kool Aid ready to go if this happens. 
I mean, Marshawn Nealon has just been, he's just gotten better and better every year he's been at Western. So, I mean, he's a, he's kind of, yeah, yeah. He's definitely going to be a guy that the Lions are going to know a lot about because of course he's a local guy, but also they need edge. And he's a guy that's Mm -hmm. kind of in that second, third round tier that I think is, is moving up some draft boards. So I like it. Yeah. Max Melton. We all are on the, I mean, I don't have to speak much on it. We love Max Melton. If you don't draft a corner in the first round, if less Kamari Lasseter is there in the second, you go get Max Melton. So I, I think yep. that we all agree there. And then Cooper baby, we, we talk about a lot. That's depth. That's a guy that's going to be your eventual starter. So you're getting again, four guys that are con- going to contribute. And if an injury happens, all four will contribute this year. So, you know, hey, real quick, it's a good first four rounds. As well, Cooper BB, when I was drafting him, Mason McCormick was available as well, too. And I think Zach Zinter, like, I think that, like, in that third round, if, if Brad gets back in the third round or gets an extra pick here mm-hmm. in the top 90, top 100, which I think there's a chance you see him do um, somehow, some way, um, there, he's going to have a chance to get, a, like, a guard that's going to be elite. Because Mason McCormick, remember that that little, uh, what is it, the 20-yard shuttle? Um that Scott kind of brought up. And he was in that number to where, like, 85% of guards that get drafted and run that they they end up starting like 85 percent of snaps in their career or something like some insane number yep. so he was available as well i choose i, I chose cooper bb but you're gonna have some options there in the third oh shout out uh matthew evans he just became a, a crunch yeah. member let's uh, go matthew member, member for one month he says neilan is a beast well we agree with you matthew evans we appreciate you steve lehman also gifted five crunch members to the shout people out. hey so real steve quick lehman, too man of the people real quick he's back the dog, I, I, I believe he had heart surgery. Phil, let's go, Phil. How, how are you feeling, right, Phil? You're happy everything went well. Um, yes. shout out, just want to we get an make update, sure everybody. Yeah, love you, Phil. Uh, anyway. Hope everything's good with you. Uh, the fact that you're tuning in despite everything you've had to kind of go through over the last couple of days, man. Uh, that's a that's a you know what? That's a Dan Campbell kind of guy right there, Phil. It's a dog, it's got he's got great. It's a Braden Fisk. Yep, no question. <laughs> Well, speaking of some dogs fit. here, uh, Lucas, I'm going to pull up your mock draft. You, you, hey, you and Bo- we, I think long. all three of us. These are all three. We we got some fire ones for the people. So here's Lucas. Says mm-hmm. Lucas, break it down. What are we What are we doing? Hey, here? I've been I've been trading up in damn near every one of my mock drafts, and I just think Brad's going to move up. And I look at the teams that really are possible with moving up to and most realistic, and it's Miami because you look at after Miami, it's a lot of teams in the NFC. And Miami, they got a lot of free agents, so I'm sure they don't mind moving back and to get more pieces around Tua. But you go up and you get Latu. Because at this point, I think if you look at a, all the prospects on the draft board and look at the lines, what they need, they need a Latu. That's the perfect fit right now, in my opinion, because they just need a guy that can get after the passer on the opposite side of Hutchinson. I think Dallas Turner would be that guy, but there's no way Dallas Turner falls out of the top 10. I don't think Brad's going to move that much assets. You get Latu on the opposite side of Hutch, that's going to be a lethal combination for the next four to five years. We talk about Max Melton all the time. You get him in the second round. If he's there, I don't care if it's a little early. That's best player available. You get the best player available. You let him develop behind Carlton Davis, Cam Sutton, et cetera. And then the player that I've been falling in love with over the last week is Brendan Rice. Because what the Lions need receiving wise is an X wide receiver that can stretch the field and just go up and get one. And Brendan Rice, in my opinion, outside of maybe Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors, is the best wide receiver in this class at high-pointing the football. If you go back and you watch Caleb Williams' film, a lot of these crazy plays where he's just like, fuck it, I'm making a play, they're jump balls to Brendan Rice. And he knows what he's going to expect when he gets in the NFL. Obviously, Jerry Rice, his father, best wide receiver in NFL history, and he's coached. If you listen to Brendan Rice interviews, probably the most down-to-earth, humble prospect in this draft. So he's going to fit right in this locker room and realize, yeah, I'm not the number one wide receiver. I got to earn my reps. He'd be a perfect fit. And for somebody like Antoine Randall L to develop, Brendan Rice, the ceiling is sky high, in my opinion, for what he brings to the game. I you, love this. Hey, yeah, I, love it. I mean, I, I'm going to, the fact that you, you, tra- you traded up, traded up eight spots, mm-hmm. and you got arguably the best edge in the entire draft. That's what some people would say. I know Field Yates have said it. There's people that believe he's the best pass rusher. Uh, Dallas Turner, there's a higher ceiling, people say with him, but a lot too as a pure pass rusher. Yeah. His hand fighting. I mean, he's he would he'd be regarded Fast, as best. Dude, dude, like, so, dude, I watched yeah. him today. Absolute demon, dude. Yeah, he just out he just overwhelms every offensive lineman he goes up against. So I love it. There's your edge, Max Melton, Brennan Rice. Mm-hmm. I the Brennan Rice thing, I, I watched. So I watched a couple USC games, um, and I, I caught Brennan Rice. He definitely stands out. Like when you when you mm-hmm. watch him play, 
like you mentioned him high pointing the football. He was a huge red zone threat. I mean, he had a touchdown in like every game, but like a couple games, I believe it was like, yeah, I think he, he had, had like 10 plus touchdowns this year. Yeah. He's a, um, he's an interesting, I don't know what he ran at the 40, but like he plays, he's just, he plays big and he's six, yeah. three. Don't think about and it. When, like you, that. when you watch him run his routes, like he's definitely, he's not a guy that you're relying on to throw a screen, like a, a quick screen and take it to the house. But when you watch how he just sets up his route, I'm assuming it's because he ran with probably the best route runner in NFL history and Jerry Rice. He grew up with him. That's his mm-hmm. dad. Like his release, it looks the same every time. So just the, the development there, he could be one of these receivers that when you look back at the draft, you're like, how did Brendan Rice go in the third round? Because his he's like 6'4", yep. 6'5". Six, six, the man can go up and just get one. Yeah, I, don't, I think this is a great draft. A lot to – I get people's concerns about the the injury. Like, I think that's a question for anyone that that sits out for as long as he did and then comes back. But um, if you just watch, like, his film speaks for itself. He's he's an absolute dog. And and if you would go up and get him and put him on the other side of Hutch, and you have DJ Reader and Lee McNeil, like that off that defensive line is is one of the more scary ones in the NFC, especially with some if you have some depth with it. Um, and then the the Brandon Rice thing too. Like, I don't know if you guys remember at the combine, like Jerry Rice was there. And he wasn't just there. Like, he was, like Lucas said, like, he was coaching him up. Like, I, I watched an interview when he was talking about how he worked with his son, um, getting ready for the combine. And, like, everything he does, he helps his. And it's like, yeah, maybe. And, and, and if you did watch him, too, at USC, he he's very, very good. Like, he, it's not just, like, his name. I see some people, like, yeah. are we just, like, would you just draft him for his name? Like, that's not it. He's a very good wide receiver. On top of that, he, he has a very high ceiling. And that also is probably, yeah, because his dad's Jerry Rice and he's going to be learning from the one of the best and his dad's going to be along his career for the next four years in Detroit. So, like, yep. it, it, there is a benefit of that as well. But, like, he is a very good player at that. Like, he, he wasn't just, like, a someone who went out there and had two touchdowns at USC and, like, 600 yards. Like, no, he went out there and, and dominated at USC with Caleb mm-hmm. Williams. And you put him on an offense with, with Jared Goff, with Amon Ross St. Brown and the weapons you have, I mean, he 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 would be a very very good piece of this offense. Very good piece. I, I would not hate that if that's your third round uh, receiver instead of doing one of the first two rounds. I would be happy with that. Mm-hmm. I see a comment here. Holla Dre says, "What about Braden Fisk out of FSU defensive tackle? Do you guys think that defensive tackle still in play? I just don't think it is. Maybe I'm wrong. I just maybe I don't think defensive tackles in play early. Someone falls. maybe in like the third fourth round. Like I still think they probably want a guy to develop." But it's, it's a depth piece because they already have so much depth there. I mean, they still want to see what Broderick and Levi are. As much as I don't believe in them, the Lions still do. So they're going to want to see what they have. You look, talk, look at a guy like Josh Pascal who also can play inside. In the first three rounds, I think before DJ Reader signed, yeah, I think Braden Fisk would have been in a lot of these mock drafts. But guys like that now, do you really want a Braden Fisk or do you want a Max Melton or do you want a wide receiver? Like I just think the position the needs have changed since then. Yeah, I mean, if a, if a defensive tackle like Fisk or, or someone falls, and, and you see you notice someone falling in the draft, I think Brad again, that's like a best player available thing to where I you don't want to go by position, try to not go by position and just see what's the best player available. I could see him doing that, but outside of that, you still need yeah. you still need someone behind DJ Reader and Ali McNeil. Like you you do still need you you do need some depth there because you really like do you, do you trust the guys behind those two guys right now or? I mean, I do not. Yeah, I mean, I, I get, I, and, and again, to to kind of Dre's point too, like I get where he's come. Like Brayden Fisk, we all like him. I mean, it's not even the player; it's just the need. Like I, I mean, if you if you draft another defensive tackle, then I mean, what what are we doing with Broderick? Like I'm, I'm serious. Like why why would why would you trade up for him in the third round? Like he yeah. should be the backup guy. And that and I'm not saying that. Like who knows? But like to me, that's more of an indictment. Like you, you should be that confident in Broderick. You took him. You traded up to get him. So mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, but like if they do that, and, and, and Pascal can play defensive tackle too. He's more of a hybrid. So like they I got get, some pieces there. I, I agree point, with Jeff. You, Bill yeah, and like I get Jeff's point. It's like yeah, you drafted him for a reason. Like if they already feel like he didn't work out and Roger didn't work out, or they need to wait another year That's and they need someone year. else. Go. Yeah, but like, dude, like you, you don't have the time just to be like try and sit on your high horse and be like, well, I did it, so I have to sit there and I got to roll with it, like. No, if you if you don't think Broderick is going to do that this year, like, and you have a best player available at that position, get him and make him make Broderick compete. That'll make Broderick rep better if he has more guys in that room to compete. So, like, that's going to help him. Don't just not draft a guy when you say you go best player available and you have a a, a defensive tackle sitting there. And don't just leave him on the board when he's like at the top of your draft board just because you have Broderick Martin. 
Like, don't do that. Like, I, I do not. Like, if he has Devondre Sweat sitting up there and he's at, like, the, the best remaining <laughs> no, player. Hey, he, that's, I'm just, that's I'm just throwing, I'm just, no, 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 I'm just, this isn't me saying Devondre. I'm just throwing out an example. This is an example. Example. Okay. This isn't, this is an example, boys. If that happens and he passes on him just because he's like, well, I have to see how Broderick plays out because I've drafted him last year. Like, you're at a point in your in the organization where you can't just sit there on your high horse and be like, like that's like something in the rebuild when you're like, okay, we have time. You don't have time. It's if you if there's a guy in well, the fifth round that like do it. Oh, fifth round, we're, I'm fine with. I just yeah, think I'm just saying like someone drops rounds, do it. The top three rounds should not be defensive tackle. If he no, takes no, one yeah, in the yeah, third, yeah. I'll I'm be like, yeah, okay, no. okay. Like maybe yeah. he gets an edge in the fourth. But you got it. You get you have to address I'm at out. least. Edge and corner first. That, that's a must. You have to. I think edge you corner and wide receiver. To. Because if you're trying to improve your defense, yeah, wide receiver too. But I'm just saying, I like, I could see him taking a wide there, receiver boy. in the third. But he's like, all right, we can get a wide receiver in the fourth. We're going to take a defensive attack. I'm not going to hate it because at the end of the day, your interior presence is going to be nuts. That's going to help Hutch. But you need to get an edge first. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing with like Brad and I kind of mentioned it. Like, we, whatever the positions of need are, at the end of the day, like, if there is a player that falls, he may just be like, you know what? Fisk is higher rated than any of these players. I'm taking him, which, you know, whether we agree with it or not, that's, but he's told us that's his strategy, yeah. like best player available. I, I think we, you said it, Boone. I think we all agree wide receiver, edge, and corner. That's the three. Would be kind of the three. Unless you want to put guard in there, you can argue, but no, I'd prefer the other three. But again, who knows if there's a, defensive tackle there in a corner there and he's like ah Braden Fisk is better than the corner like that's where he's gonna take Braden Fisk like I I we've seen him put do him it. on the edge put Fisk on the edge right, let him cook <laughs> hey again I saw the comment someone said did you do you guys listen to what Brad says he goes best player available in Phil's needs and free agency I'm again I'm I'm with that like that I cannot wait till the NFL draft because I know we're gonna have these conversations and what's going to happen is Brad's just going to go do his own thing. And we're all going to yeah. be like, like, we're going to be doing the draft show. And, and, and like, he's going to trade up and he's going to get back in the first round. He's going to do this. Or he's, I mean, we're going to be like, oh, whoa, what, like, what is he doing? And he's like, imagine if he just goes out there and gets like a, I don't know, like a linebacker. I, like, he just, just gets something wild and just goes off the board. And Cooper? gets a Cooper DeGene. Like, what if he does that? You, we have to be, pre- we do have to be pre- pre- prepared for that. I'm just warning you guys now. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I just think people have kind of written off Broderick too early. Like, I'm not even like I'm going to stay die on the hill of Broderick, but like we haven't even seen anything to even base that take off of. Like, I don't even – what? I I'm, wonder I'm, why. <laughs> like, what's the prem- – like, what's the – the Look, base I, of that take, like I, I mean, maybe because he didn't beat out Benito, fair, but we all knew he was a project. I mean, we, they said it, like he's not going to be ready think, to play year one. I think so Roderick's going like, to be fine, fellas. I, I, I like. From? I think it's going to be. He traded up into the like third round. I think Broderick is going to be fine. I think like he he just he needed time. He needs time. He's not going to be Chris Jones, but like come no. on. develop into a fine role player, possibly. <laughs> he might actually I, be I, I the perfect. Think... What were you saying, Boone? I would just say he might actually like it might be really good that he's going to be like going into year two development another training camp with the new Terrell Williams. Is it Terrell Williams, the new D line coach? Yeah. Yeah, Is Terrell Williams now behind with oh, him behind God, yeah. behind no listen behind DJ <laughs> no, 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 like, yeah, like that's, that's behind the Ali McNeil like <laughs> damn, he's behind damn, two of the right? best in the league, fellas. Yeah, I I agree with you, but my my whole thing is, and I'm sure you guys agree with this too. We will never ever ever see the ceiling of Broderick Martin. I think we can all agree with that at this point. I mean, maybe it's a little early, but just the that's players great. that are in front of him, the player and the money that they're gonna because they're gonna resign Aleem. You already know that's probably going to happen. Yep. Readers here, they're probably at some point in the next couple of years going to add another defensive tackle, probably even this year. Roderick's going to keep getting knocked down. He's going to keep fighting. He's, he's got a lot of fight out of Western Kentucky, the Hilltopper, baby. But hey, it is what it is. We've seen well, Levi. We've Brad's not going to hit on all of them. No GM well, does. Oh, well, here's the thing, though. Okay, because DJ Reader, he's an incredible player. But what was yep. the big thing people bring up with DJ Reader? He the takes up line. space. He demands a double team. Roderick Martin, baby. Roderick's like 6'5", 350. I mean, what the hell is he going to well, demand? He can't move. He can't well, move. No one said no, no he's Well, guess what? Guess right, what, Lucas? Have... Lucas, <laughs> guess DJ what? Reader's, DJ Reader's agile out there. Yeah, no, guess no what? doubt. He is. He's a, levels and levels above Roderick. Levels. 
guess what? What's up, Boone? Aline McNeil had a pretty good transformation from last year to this this year. Mm -hmm. Let that man, Project Martin, go get with someone and have a nice little uh, transformation and and stay stay nice and big and and, and get a little agile, as you would say. Let that man do that and prove you wrong. Broderick Martin will never have the pass rushing bag that Ali McNeil did or does. That's just oh, fact. Yeah, I'm not saying well, and, not. and like Ali McNeil. I thought the conversation George, was about taking up space, not pass rushing. Well, you brought up Aleem. And now we had a transformation. I'm, saying, Aleem slowed no, down. I'm, not, I'm not comparing the players. What I'm saying is like you can go get with the trainer in the NFL and you can get more agile and you could go out there and get better at that. That's that's not skill. That is like go work on that, dude. Like go get better. That's he's all he needs to do. I, I'm, and he'll he's going to be in the I'm NFL for a full gonna, off season now. He, I, I'm not saying he's just going to never step on the field. All I'm saying is, is just the people that like, like, like it. Broderick is going to be a problem in the interior <laughs> of the Lions defense for years. You put him next to Aiden Hutchinson. And I know it wasn't, but I'm saying when the hype round when he first gets drafted, I don't. Who said that? I don't see those days happening. I just, it, well, it's, you, it's just for what? Are you the one saying that Broderick's going to be next to Aiden Hutchinson? Is that you? Well, people were like, <laughs> No, around the yeah. draft time, like we talk about, like how people react to the Gibbs pick and the Campbell. Yeah, pick. Like, it was people when the they saw Brad trade up for a guy right. that that was massive out of Western Kentucky. That knew <laughs> yeah. they were like, "Who the hell is this guy? Brad's got a gem. He's got yeah. a gem. No one knows about him yet. No one knew." Well, about him. to be fair, you, you mean you, you for Brad Holmes, every draft pick he makes, even if it's rounds one through seven, and it could be the seventh round. You're like, this guy could be something because Brad Holmes just finds guys, yeah, man. I, it's just, and like it's like it's it's just like it, maybe it's a bad thing, but it's it's a great thing. But maybe there is some you know where you get false hope with certain guys. But like Broderick's different because you trade it up in the third round. Like he yeah. should be good. That's where you got Kirby Joseph. You know what I mean? So if, develop, if, develop, if, develop, if, develop. So hey, we'll get to my mock here, and we'll, we'll see oh, what shit. I did. Yeah, that was like that was a pretty good gap in between. I didn't yeah. realize we were still doing a mock draft. So in my head, I'm like, all right, what's our next segment? I was about to. Hey, and I want to clarify real quick. I hope I'm wrong about Roderick. Like I do. I hope. Oh, I'm you wrong. will. I hope he... Oh, you will. No, I'm just. Kidding. Jeez, Watch we Chris are... Jones, huh? Chris Jones, huh? Come on. Hey, no. All right. I'll, I'll stand on. I'll be one of you. I'm just kidding. All right, here's my mock, Lucas. I don't know how the hell you traded up. With the Dolphins for a fifth. I had to give up a third for it to work. I literally tried it four hey. times. Oh, hey, hey, I got robbed. But, hey, don't mind the ca- capital. That's up to Brad Holmes. He handles the capital. I took care of the players. All right? <laughs> I don't I know got, you did that. <laughs> I got – Yeah, I dude, got PFF sometimes screws me too, man. Oh, it's bad. But I traded up to 20. It was Jackson Powers Johnson or Latu Latu. I had to make a decision. All right? I sat there. Mm-hmm. I, You know, I – I was, I was sitting there, I'm like, man, I want to take JPJ so bad because he he's going to be the eventual starter after Zeitler leaves or Ragnow retires. That would have been a great pick. But I, th- I said, you know what? We need a guy. I went kind of like what Booner and you were talking about earlier. I need a guy who come in and play right away, who come in and contribute right away. And I took Latu Latu. There is injury risk, but, hey, maybe that makes Brad a little horny. Who knows? Maybe that entices him. <laughs> hey. I, 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 I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So he, he takes Latu Latu. Now at 61, this is something I, like I haven't seen pick. before. Jalen Polk. You like mentioned with Brendan Rice, his ability to high point the ball. In that like top of the draft, high pointing the football, go up and get contested catches. Jalen Polk is mm-hmm. up there too. He's mm-hmm. making he's not the most kind of like Brendan Rice. They're kind of similar in a way where they're not like yeah. explosive athletes. But they just make plays. And that's kind yeah. of what you're missing with Josh Reynolds. I like Jalen Polk a lot. Um, he, he had a very, very productive year this year at Washington. And in the second round, there's some good wideouts available. And I was still <laughs> able to get Max Mellon at 73. So, you know, we have some similar mocks. I and like we didn't it. even tell each other who we were taking. So that means a great minds think alike. We got Max Melton uh, on, what, all of them, I think? Yeah, yeah you know what? Every, every can, last can we have a, mocks, real quick, let's just have this Max Melton conversation because I saw someone in the chat say you guys love Max Melton. If Max Melton gets to our pick in the 70s, and, and if Brad doesn't draft him, our show, and we've been pushing Max Melton on all of our like listeners and everyone who follows us. Everyone's gonna, it's gonna be like, uh, what are we doing, Brad? When it's probably he's making a good mm-hmm. decision, but we're all just gonna be like, Max Melton's there. Why didn't you t-? like? I, I feel like that's gonna be the situation. I just, I could see it. I could see it.